Hello and welcome to Calvin episode four. <laughs> this is my uh, second take of this review. Uh, my first one, I uh, got most of it done and then just uh, got very emotional, you know. Um, I think it's because, you know, uh, you know, uh, it's just like an emotional time, you know, quarantine, you got to think a lot with yourself and, uh, you know, uh, this movie means a lot to me. So it's sort of like I was thinking of better times and I'm like, huh. They'll come back. They'll come back. But, uh, you know. I don't know. Just got real sad real quick. But! Uh, and, and since I do it in one take, it just drew into the take. Uh, so that's unfortunate. Um, but, we're gonna try that again. Um, so, we'll get on with the... I guess we'll do a... Another stubble report. Uh, I did one and I was like, ah, I got it done, finally. And then it was like, oh no, just had to ruin that take. But, uh, stubble report, what do we got? We got, uh, you know, I think it sort of stopped. I mean, it's still growing, but I think it's like, I don't know if my cheeks are going to get, they, they have like, like uh, sometimes like, there's just like little like long hairs that are on the cheek and they just sort of get long, but they're like solitary. The camera's not even picking them up because they're so sad. Um, but you know, like that's the that's the bad part of growing a beard because like my face is just like, oh, we'll grow like one solitary hair on the cheek. Um, no reason. Uh, you know, it's just gonna be there alone. And it's like, oh, but I want this, but on the cheeks, that'd be nice. I'd have an actual beard then, you know. Now I just have like this, and then like a very very light light mustache. Also, it's like a little bit there, a little little bit. Uh, I sort of like it, though. I like the feel of the beard. Like, if I could grow a full beard, I would have it. Because it just feels very, uh... I don't know. I like it. It feels good. I like it. I especially like the mustache. Um, if I could grow it darker, I'd keep it. It's very blonde, because I'm sort of, sort of a dirty blonde. Um, and I don't know. I think the shave... Not shaving. I feel totally comfortable with it. Uh, but this hair... Um, I'm less comfy with that. Um, it's just so much. Like... It's hard to style. That's why I have the hats. Thankfully, I have hats. Man, I have like four or five different hats that are saving my bacon. Because, man, if I had to just go out in public with this, <laughs> I, there's so much hair. It's like a mullet. But, uh, yeah. Um, what else? Well, we talked about the stubble. The report, as we would. Um, yeah, now let's try uh, re- uh, filming this review um it's for the grand budapest hotel which is one of my favorite movies of all time um i forgot how um it ended because i haven't seen it in years that's how see that's the problem with me i like love a movie and then just won't see it for years um it's just sort of hard to rewatch them sometimes because you're like i don't know once you know how they end you're like oh i don't need to revisit it but then when you revisit your it, it's like revisiting an old friend you know you're like it feels good. Um, but yeah, so we got the Grand Budapest Hotel. I have it on DVD, um, which was rough um, to watch it because quality of the DVD, like, I don't know if any of you still watch DVDs um, or if you've all transitioned over to Blu-ray. I'm mostly Blu-ray. I only buy Blu-rays now, but um, it's because the picture quality on the DVD is just not, um, it's not the same as a Blu-ray. Um, it's it's lesser so that was sort of rough because it's sort of like watching like a youtube video in 720 i mean you don't want to do that if there's a 1080 version of, available and there is a blu-ray version of the grand budapest hotel i just don't have it um but there's a criterion collection movie coming out in july for that one and i'm gonna have to pick it up because the criterion collection i only get it for movies i totally love like i moonrise kingdom up there criterion because you get so many extras and insights into the movie and it's just you it's perfect if you love that movie that's the way to go because you have like the best quality best sound you have all that extra stuff that just makes the movie a complete experience and i love it um but now, but now let's actually like review it you know um it's about a hotel um in 1930s um but it's more about the characters around the hotel like the hotel concierge um played by ray fines and then um, Zero, who's the lobby boy for the hotel, and he's played by uh, Tony Revolori. Yeah, Re Revolori? I don't know. Uh, I'm sorry if I butchered your name. I love your performance in here. Um, but this is a 
they're the two main um, people, and they have a very like father and son or like mentor and uh, mentory bond. Um, and I love that part of the movie. It's like their connection feels so genuine. Um, and I love it. And I love like the style of this movie. It's very like bright and pastel-y. Like this pink on this box here is sort of like what the outside of the Grand Budapest Hotel looks like. Um, and it's very, um, I love that. It's very bright and cheerful and, um, it's very stylistic. Um, like it's, um, it's like filmed with like a narrator narrating it. Um, but the narrator is wrote it in a book. So then someone else is like reading the book. Uh, so you have like that plot thing and that doesn't really come into play much, but, um, you like have these characters recounting this um story of this like 1930s hotel and sort of an end of an era like you have like sort of like this decadence and then like after that period it just fades away and you see like the hotel at present time and it's like you know it doesn't have that same uh decadent like feel um that it did in the 30s um and but the, that's not the mo that's the plot itself is about um a woman who is murdered and then like leaves a painting to um Ray Fine's character, uh Gustav H. Um, and then they have to uh then you have like the whole plot around that. Like you have like intrigue and uh you got a uh, villains who want all the money from this woman and um Yeah. Um it's a great it's a great story. Um I don't wanna ruin it. Like that'd be bad to plot twist get all the plot twists out of the way. Um but you know, it's sort of like it has that mystery vibe. Like, you're like, hmm, what, what's going on? And you have, like, you have, like, a daring prison escape. You have um, a race through the Alps. Um, and you have, like, these beautiful miniature sets that they did. Um, like, the Grand Budapest Hotel. Um, I'll show you it. The Grand Budapest Hotel itself is a miniature. Um, and it's just a gorgeous miniature. Um, and uh, I love it. I love it so much, the, the use of miniatures in this film, because they're very... Um, like, you can tell they're miniatures, but they're so intricate and beautiful. And they have, um, oh, what the heck are they called? Um, backdrops, like painted backdrops, um, which are just gorgeous. They're highly detailed and, um, they're just beautiful. Um, and I love that part of the film. Like, just the atmosphere it creates. It's very, um, vibrant. It's very, um, stylistically, it's very, um, different than a lot of other filmmakers like Wes Anderson is very unique in his uh, vision um his like jokes are very him like they're very uh subtle almost like sort of like a uh, highbrow um and I love the the dialogue he does is very like stylistically him as well like it's sort of like Quentin Tarantino where you're like oh man I know who wrote that and I love it it has me totally intrigued um and like the acting is also incredible. Like Russ Anderson's great at getting like so many actors to just sort of like sign on and help out. Like he has like cameos from Bill Murray, Har Harvey Keitel, um, Edward Norton is in this movie, as well as just Ray Fiennes playing the main character, and it's just great. Um, yeah. So the story, I forgot how like melancholy it at it, it ends because it's like sort of about like the end of this like era like this end of this decadent era and a character even says like maybe the era like didn't actually exist at that time maybe he just maybe gustav just made it for that time um it's sort of i guess like um sort of like the great gatsby in a way um where it's sort of like um this one person making something that they really want um even if it doesn't exist um yeah, but I love that aspect of it. And I love that the story goes there. And I love... The, the, watching this movie, it's just... It's very calming, and I love it. Because it's very, um... I don't... It's hard to describe the feeling you get when you're watching a Wes Anderson movie. Because it's very... It's different watching any of his films than any other film. It's almost like a... Storybook-esque. Like, it's very... They're very unique worlds and they're very like picture perfect and i love them um and also his just like his stylistically like his zooms his like cuts his like pans they're just incredible they like some of them are used for jokes some of them are just used for style um but they're not like overdone like it's not like oh man you're just doing this to do it it's very like plotted out um yeah um 
but yeah, it's one of my favorite movies of all time because you just have this, um, I love them. I love mysteries. So, I mean, sort of like having the mystery at the core, uh, intrigues me and I love it. And also like it follows sort of like all the stuff you want in a mystery. Like you have like intrigue, you have like a bad villain, like, um, you have like the family of the woman who died, got murdered. You have her, them as the villains. And you have like, um, William Defoe as like this just menacing dude. I don't even think he really says anything in the entire movie. He's just like menacing. Like he has these like brass knuckles and he just sort of cracks his knuckles like the whole movie. Um, and he's just like a menacing villain that I love. Um, and then you have like, um, you have even like little cameos like Jeff Goldblum where he's just like a lawyer, but he's sort of like a, it's, it's it's just sort of a interesting role where he's sort of like a a serious man with like some of this like crazy stuff going along around him and you know it's just a great movie um it's very stylistically unique um which is probably the one downfall of Wes Anderson movies is like if you don't enjoy his style you probably won't enjoy any of his movies because they are very um I think they're very much an acquired taste um because they are very like stylistically like unique and different and they're very quirky. And I think that that doesn't work for some people. Like some people I think would be turned off by just how quirky it is. Um, so you sort of have to embrace that aspect of it. But once you embrace that aspect of it, I think you'll probably enjoy most of his movies because they're just all, they, they all are very like similar stylistically to um, like quirky wise and all that. Um, and he uses a lot of like the same shots. He uses a lot of miniatures and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Well, um, what else are we, should we talk about? Oh, um, so this week I'm actually doing, um, for the Thursday, uh, you choose one. I'm doing, um, where you pick between, um, uh, Itu Mama Tambien and Roma by uh, Alfonso Cuaron. Um, yeah, those are two movies I haven't seen. Um, I think they're both Spanish language. I know for a fact Itu Mama Tambien is. I think Roma is too. Um, yeah, but those two movies I really want to see. Um, and I think, um, depending on which one we choose, I'll have interesting things to say. I think Itu Mama Tambien is 1999 and Roma is 2016. I don't know if you'd consider either of those like a classic. Like, I don't know how long it needs to, uh, how long time has to pass, but I will, uh, I think that enough time has passed that they're both uh, important works of film. And then after that, like next week, uh, we do a Star Wars review. Um, I still haven't seen the last bit of the Clone Wars uh, like TV series. I've seen like the first half of the sixth season, but not the, or is it seventh? I don't know, whatever the last season is, whatever number that is. Um, but we'll have to watch that. Um, but I don't think I'll do a review on that. Maybe like a short snippet. Um, but we'll talk about something for Star Wars Day. Um, it's a Monday, so it'll be an extra video for me, but... Uh, you know, I'm a very, very big fan of Star Wars. Uh, not the new stuff, though. I guess if I was talking about Star Wars, I think I'd hate more of the movies than I love. But for some reason, I still love it so much. It's an interesting aspect of the series. But yeah, I guess I'm going to leave off today. Uh, I hope you watch Grand Budapest Hotel. I know it's a little bit, I think, I don't think it's on any streaming services. So you're going to have to rent it or on Amazon for like three bucks or um, yeah, something like that um to see it um i don't even know if any of wes anderson's movies are on streaming but if any of them are i highly recommend you watch one of them because he's one of my favorite directors he's very um his movies are some of my favorites um they're just stylistically something like clicks for me and i'm like man this is i love this yeah well um goodbye uh let's all stay positive in this uh trying time and uh you know watch good movies it's the watch good movies and um, you know, we'll get through it.